Welcome to a team aesthetic educational event. Uh, today we're going to treat a patient with lithium disilicate veneers with the dentistry being done by Dr. Jim Fondries. As we can see we have fairly conservative preparations. We do an initial wax injection from the provisional restorations and then we start to modify contour to try to enhance the natural appearance of the wax up come through and add a little bit of wax to support the embrasure form. We'll open our lingual embrasures a little bit as we go. We'll work with various carvers to control the emergence profile and start developing the surface morphology of the teeth. We try to design a very harmonious set of teeth that look natural as they go together. We want to get the emergence profile smoothed out very nicely and we want to build in nice surface morphology and surface texture on the teeth as well. Fine tuning with a sharp instrument opens the embrasure form, which is the most important part of the case. And then we want to do a functional analysis checking protrusive and canine guidance to be sure that everything's okay after we've done our contour and quickly check back into an incisal matrix and make small modifications as needed. We'll now separate the restorations into individual units by slicing them. And then we will allow a little bit of cutback for incisal translucency. You notice I'm doing very little vertical cutback and I'm only cutting back the facial a little ways down the incisal. I'll go a little further interproximally to create the look of translucency, although I'm leaving lithium disilicate supporting all of the incisal edge and the interproximal edge. You can see the lingual is hardly cut back at all, leaving 400 megapascal lithium disilicate there. We'll go ahead and sprue these restorations, invest them very carefully to avoid getting bubbles, and then we'll go ahead and burn those out and press them. Once the restorations are uh, pressed, We'll make composite dyes to check our underlying color and see what the effect of that is. We'll use Brassler's new lithium disilicate and zirconia grinding instruments. Incidentally, this burr or wheel has been used since last summer and it still is full sized. You can see how quickly it cuts the lithium disilicate to take the sprues off quickly. I'll use that initially. I'll switch to their medium grit, uh, more of a tapered cylinder shape, just to clean the investment residue off the surface and freshen the surface before I start using my Brassler's diamonds to fill in the uh, surface morphology and, and do final shaping and surface texturing. As you can see here, I'm working on the emergence profile again. I'm just trying to smooth those deflective zones. And then we'll freshen our cutback with a diamond impregnated rubber wheel. And finally use the uh, new blue thin dialyte wheel to uh, put our surface morphology in. And the incisal edge cut back. Just separate our lobe formations a little bit. We want to uh, develop something that looks like this prior to moving forward. We want to check and see how long our provisional restoration was to judge where we're at with that cutback. You can see I haven't shortened the vertical very much. And we'll start by, plusing, pressing, ah, by placing the restorations on stump dies. And initially we have a color of a BL3, but with staining and glazing, we can move that clear up to an A2 in the gingival third. Some of that color is coming from underneath, some of it is from what we did with the stain. Our incisal effects bake, you can see the effects internally now of the mamelon effects. You can see the opalescent effect of the ingot, and you can see the micro layering of an opal ceramic going over the top of this to fill out to full form. Here you see a correction bake. There's the initial results of our layering. One more little correction just to fill out our lobe forms and make sure we aren't under contoured. And then we'll go back to blending the contour of the incisal layering in with what was done on the gingival half. We'll start with an 863-012 to develop my lobe formations. Work back into the contact areas, making sure I don't have any rough areas in front of the contact. And everything looks nice and smooth. Check my incisal silhouette there. We'll go back to our composite dies. 
You can see our final surface morphology here prior to glazing. And you can see the color of our final restorations after glazing. Very dynamic and sizable effects with very little reduction in overall strength by layering. There's the opalescent effect. There's with front lighting. It's a very dynamic ingot that looks very natural in the mouth in certain instances. As always, choosing the correct ingot for your patient is a large part of the overall concept. And here you can see the final case in the mouth. A couple of quick photographs. Beautiful dentistry by Dr. Jim Fondries. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our production and we look forward to seeing you at Team Aesthetics.